the common, most common SI units, common. In other words, these are the ones that everything else is really built upon. We call it SI units. In other words, you might call them base units. Um, the first one's so simple, you all know what it is. It's called time. You know how you measure time. In physics, we use the unit of seconds, which we represent by the letter S. Right? Not so surprising, not so hard. In other words, if you're doing a problem that deals with hours, that you know, maybe you're going 50 miles an hour, 50 kilometers an hour, we don't usually use hours in physics. We usually use seconds. So that means you'll have to convert between hours to get to seconds in order to do anything. All right. Now, you can use hours, but it totally screws up all the other units that we'll learn about later. So the rule of thumb is always you use as much as possible everything in the base units that you have. And if you don't have them in your base units to begin with, you need to convert them to get to the base units before you do anything. So the unit of time we use is not minutes, not hours, not days. It's always seconds. Okay. The unit of length. Okay. We use the meter. I think you probably all knew that. And we use the letter M to denote that. So in other words, we don't use kilometers, we don't use miles, we don't use yards, we don't use feet. We always use meters. If you don't have a problem in meters, that means that you have to convert. And they will not tell you in your problems, hey, it's 15 yards, you might want to convert to meters. Nobody's going to tell you that. You have to do that yourself. So the base unit is meters. Know that you're going to have to do that. Now the concept of mass. The concept of mass, we actually use the kilogram. We don't really use grams in physics to calculate uh, as a unit of mass, even though it's, it's wrapped up in here. It's thousands of grams, which we'll talk about what kilo means in a minute, but this is a thousand grams. And the unit of this is kilogram, okay? So we use seconds, we use meters, we use kilograms. Um, it turns out that these units are enough to really get started in physics because what we usually start talking about right away is velocity, meters per second. Notice that we have both of these units combined together to give us meters per second. Acceleration, we'll talk about much later. It's called meters per second squared. So it involves meters per second. And kilograms comes into the unit of you know, force and other stuff we'll, we'll talk about later. I don't want to get too far into it. But they can be combined together to give us the unit of force that we're going to use later, which is called a newton. All right. So do everything in these base units um, here. Now, just for grins, I'm going to give you a couple of quick kind of frames of reference if you've never heard of these units before. A meter, one meter, is approximately 3.3 feet. Right, so if you've never seen a meter before, this is about a foot, so that's two, so that's three. So a meter is a, is a good, maybe even a little bigger than that, it's a good spanning of your arms, right? That's about what a meter is. Uh, we're not gonna use feet in physics, but I'm just telling you roughly how long a meter is. Uh, a kilogram, if you've never really had really much experience with what is a kilogram actually. It's about 2.2 pounds. 2.2 pounds. So everybody kind of has an idea of what a couple of pounds feels like. That's what one kilogram roughly is. We're not going to be de dealing with pounds in physics. And if you ever see a problem that has pounds, you're going to have to convert it. But just to give you an idea of what these units are. By the way, what is the unit of mass? The unit of mass um, is a little different than the unit of weight. We'll talk about that later. The unit of mass is how much stuff is there. How many, it's not really how many atoms, but it's how much stuff is occupied as matter there. In other words, you all know that everything has weight on Earth, right? But if I take a bowling ball on Earth and it weighs this much, if I go in deep space where there's no gravity from the sun or the planets or anything, totally floating in free space, then that bowling ball, you know, if you try to push it or pull it, it's gonna resist your motion, right? Or if you take even something bigger than a bowling ball, like a car, you all know a car has weight on Earth, but even if you take that car into deep space, so it's not even close to Earth, it's way far away between galaxies, nowhere, nothing's around. If you were to float up to that car and try to push on it, the car would kind of resist your motion. It'd be hard to get going, but then once you got it going, it would, you know, you could push it, right? Well, the resisting of motion is what we call mass. The more massive something is, then the more it resists being pushed, basically, right? So you don't have to be on Earth to have mass. Mass exists everywhere, no matter where you take the object. If it's on the moon, if it's on Jupiter, if it's in deep space, if it's on the Earth, it has mass. That's just how much intrinsic stuff is there. Um, whereas weight is how much gravity is pulling on it. So 
everything has mass. Everything you can touch, everything you can interact with as a physical object has what we call mass, and we measure mass in kilograms in physics. All right, so let's talk about these metric prefixes. So we have these base units, seconds, meters, and kilograms, but we can modify these things because sometimes we don't want to talk about 3,016 seconds. Sometimes we don't want to talk about 17,000 meters or 1.2 million meters or something like that. So we have, we can modify these things with what we call metric prefixes. Metric prefixes. And what are the main metric prefixes? One you don't use too much is mega, right? But you do use it occasionally. And we ca ca use a capital M to denote mega. And when you see something, just think about what does mega mean? It means mega intense, mega crazy, right? Mega means million. That's what it means in physics. So one million is 10 to the power of six. That's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, right? So that equals, or that means you're multiplying times one million. Okay, so why would we use mega? Probably the best example you, you already know about is power, watts, electric power, watts, right? We might talk about a reactor is five megawatts. That's five million watts because mega, well this, this letter M basically means million. So when you say megawatt, it's million watts. So if you say five megawatts, it's five million watts because you're multiplying by a million. So you see, we use the prefixes to modify the base units because we may not want to say five million watts, five million watts, five 25 million watts all the time. We say 25 megawatts, right? And it just rolls off the tongue easier and everybody knows what we mean. What other metric prefixes do we have? We have kilo, okay? We represent that with a prefix of K. And that means we're multiplying by 10 to the power of 3, which means we're multiplying the base unit times 1,000. And you all know what kilo means because you've all heard of kilometer, kilometer, kilometers, sometimes you call it, kilometer. That means 1,000 meters, right? Or we also used it in kilogram. This is 1,000 grams. So the small k means multiply the base unit times 1,000. Okay, now we have centi right? Which means we put a little a lowercase c in front of it. Now here's where we start to go smaller. The, 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 unit, the, the prefixes that make it bigger are usually kilo and mega, but we also have prefixes that make the unit smaller. So instead of multiplying by a big number, we're going to multiply by a small number, which means 10 to the minus 2, which means we multiply by 1 one hundredth, right? So the best example here is centimeter. You all know that. So you have the base unit of meter, but centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter, right? One one hundredth of a meter. So if we have 225 centimeters, it's 225 one one hundredths of a meter, okay? So that's what that means. So you modify the meter by making it smaller using centi for centimeters. You can modify the meter making it bigger, kilo for kilometers. So you can use those kilo and centi to make the, the base unit bigger and smaller. You also are aware of millimeters or milli, I should say. I also already gave away the punchline. We're multiplying by milli, we're multiplying by a small number instead of 10 to the minus two, 10 to the minus three, which means we're multiplying by one one thousandth, which means we're making the number even smaller. So you all know probably that a millimeter is much smaller than a centimeter, right? So a millimeter chops a meter into a thousand pieces. That's how big a millimeter is. A centimeter chops a meter into a hundred pieces. That's how big a centimeter is. Also, we use milli in time quite a bit, milliseconds, right? On a stopwatch, you might look at the tiny little numbers, it might be in milliseconds, depending on how your clock is set up. But that's splitting up something into a thousand pieces, and that's one of those little pieces is it. And then one that we use less often is micro, right? And we, we can't use M for it because then we'll be confused. So we use a Greek letter uh, called mu uh, there. And it's, it like a, it's like a up and then kind of a U. It looks kind of like a U with a, things hanging off either side, basically. And you're multiplying that by 10 to the minus 6, which means you're multiplying by 1, uh, one millionth. You might also hear this called microns, but really what it is is micrometer. So you have centimeter, one one hundredth, millimeter, one one thousand, micrometer, one one millionth. So you only use micrometers microns, sometimes you hear them called, uh, you only use micrometers when you're talking about really, really small things. Really, really small things, like, like, like bacteria or something. 
That might be so many micrometers wide or something. Really, really small. So the ones that we use most commonly in this class are going to be these. Kilo, centi, milli. I'm not saying that you'll never use mega. I'm not saying you'll never use micro. I'm just saying these are the ones you use most of the time. Kilometers, kilograms, centimeters, centimeters, millimeters, things like that. Occasionally you'll have these other guys here, but mostly we're going to stick to these three. Uh, also, I want to point out that there are other prefixes that I haven't even listed on here. There's uh, deci, there's, there's a bunch of a giga. You've probably heard of gigawatts. One, one, 21 gigawatts, or gigawatts, whatever. Um, so those would be off the scale here. Instead of a million, that would be a billion times a billion. But you only use giga, giga meters or whatever if you have very incredible distances or very large numbers that we're just not going to use too much. So just know that this chart is not complete, but these are the main ones that we're going to use to get started. So what does all this mean? Why do we care about prefixes? Um, what it really means um, is that 100, how many centimeters do you think are in a meter? Well, 100 centimeters are in a meter. How do we know that? Because we just said that centi is 1 one hundredth. So if a meter is this big, then a centimeter is 1 one hundredth of that, and that means you could fit 100 of those centimeters into a meter, right? Another example would be a thousand millimeters fit into one meter. Right? How do you know? Well, a meter is this long, I'm saying. Milli means we cut it into a thousand pieces. That's how big a milli is. So a millimeter is a tiny little thing. It takes a whole thousand of those tiny little things to add up to equal one meter. So we know a thousand millimeters are in a meter. Right? Similarly, one million micrometers is, uh, would add up to be uh, one meter, same exact thing, because there's a million, these are one one millionth, right? So it's a tiny little thing, size of a bacteria, I have to put a million of them together to string together to make a uh, meter. So you see, I have to have a, a large number of these small units that add up to one meter in each of those cases. Going the other direction, you already know that one megameter, capital M, notice that mega is capital, one megameter or megawatt probably would be a little make more sense to actually write down as an example, but I'm using megameter, is how many meters? 1,000 meters. Because mega is a very large, mega means one million. So we take it and we say, okay, one million means one million meters. And you all know that one kilometer is 1,000 uh, meters because kilometer, literally you just read it, okay? So these things that we have here, these are called conversion factors factors. So what's going to happen in your physics classes is that you're going to have to know, nobody's going to tell you that there are a hundred centimeters in a meter or that there are a thousand milli whatever's milligrams, let's say, in one gram. Or there's a thousand milliseconds in one second, whatever. Nobody's going to tell you that. You have to know that because you know the metric system. And what's going to happen is in your problems, we're going to, they're going to give you uh, 13 milliseconds is how long it takes this ball to go. But I already told you that you don't want to do calculations in milliseconds. You want to do calculations in the base unit of seconds. So that means that if you're given a problem in milliseconds, you're going to have to convert those milliseconds into seconds to, in order to do anything. So that's why this is important to understand. Now there are other conversion factors. Notice that the ones that I've listed here are all inside of the metric system. There are other conversion factors that you might use occasionally. For instance, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Every now and then you might get a problem in inches and then you have to convert it. Uh, of course, this will just convert it to centimeters, but you might then want to convert to meters in order to do your calculation. Uh, one foot uh, is going to be equal to 0 0.305 meters. These are not things you should remember. These are not things that you should memorize. I'm just telling you, you find these in a table in your book somewhere. One mile uh, is equal to 1.609 kilometers, right? So sometimes one mile per hour, kilometer per hour, you can see that miles and kilometers are not quite the same, but close. Uh, one meter is equal to 39.37 inches. That's kind of a useless conversion factor, but it's there. That's how many inches fit inside of a meter. And then I'm just going to write one more down. One kilometer is 0 0.621 miles. Notice that 
this one goes from miles to kilometers, this one goes from kilometers to miles, but these basically are related to one another. So why do we write all this stuff down? Because occasionally you'll be given a problem that has inches or pounds, very rarely. But don't forget, anytime that happens, you have to convert back into the base units, which are meters, kilograms, and seconds. Meters, kilograms, seconds. That's what we're gonna work with in this course all the time. And so, you know from the metric system, the centi, the milli, the micro, and all that, you know all these conversion factors in your head if you know what the metric prefixes mean. You don't really have to memorize anything specifically because everything's a power of 10. And that's why the metric system is way better than the English system of measurement. I mean, I'm, I live in America, but I don't use the English system because it's kind of ridiculous. It's 12 inches and a foot. I mean, it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't have any real reasoning behind it. It's all historical. The metric system is all based on powers of 10, and that's why it's easy to deal with. But occasionally, you will have to convert between units, so you have to know what some of them are. And in the next lesson, I'm going to actually show you how to convert between units. Here, we're just writing the conversion factors down. How much of this fits in this? Next section, follow me on there, and we're going to learn how to convert between units, which is a core, core, core uh, skill to master in physics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.